Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live at Four on this Monday. Hope you all had a good weekend. Welcome back to you. Thank you. Good to be back. Good little sun. I brought the warm weather back with me. I have a feeling this might be the last 80 degree could, day of the year. It could well be. Yeah, but I think they're, so. They're breaking records up in La Crosse. It's crazy. It's warm outside. Yeah, I was surprised. I thought, okay, I'll wear the summer wear <laughs> yeah, one last day. I got a jacket out again, too. <laughs> yeah. So we'll get to the weather in just a bit. But first, here's what's making news on this Monday. We're hearing from outgoing Madison Police Chief Mike Koval for the first time since announcing his resignation from the department over the weekend. And in Washington, President Trump is mounting a vigorous defense while against a whistleblower complaint. We'll, we'll tell you why he says he wants to meet his so-called accuser. And the man accused of abusing infants at Meritor's NICU enters a plea in court this afternoon. Let's take a look outside today. It feels like the middle of July outside. Oh, it is warm out. Here's the place to be on a day like today. Yeah. The weather words for today, some rain, different month. And Dana Tyler, Dana Fulton is in the backyard. <laughs> Yes, here she is. Mark, we already did one show together. I know. Like, you don't so, even so, have an excuse. Is it, I was spinning the weather wheel. No, <laughs> no. You just, you've been stuck with me all afternoon and this gross weather. I'm sorry if you're hoping for a little more summer, but right now it just feels a little soupy outside. Here's a live look with our Edgewater Sky Cam. A partly sunny sky right now. Of course, that cloud coverage really held on this afternoon or this morning. Uh, this afternoon, we, we were barely in the upper 70s around 12 o'clock. And then, of course, now we're just climbing right on up through the 80s. Doppler track's been nice and quiet. But once we get closer to midnight, those showers and thunderstorm chances are just going to increase. Compared to this time yesterday, there's a 30-degree jump in Black River Falls, a 29-degree jump around the Dells, and a 25-degree jump for us in Madison. That puts us at 85 right now in Madison, 90 in La Crosse, just a few degrees away from our record in Madison. But we're hopefully starting to back off now I'm expecting a partly sunny sky through the rest of the evening overnight the cloud coverage really builds on in as well as those shower and thunderstorm chances the rain builds in for early tuesday morning and stays through wednesday we're expecting some isolated flooding concerns we'll take a close look at the rain chances building in in just a few minutes right now here's a live look at the beltline at park street the eastbound side starting to slow down just a little more no accidents to report I'm getting a little slower closer to john nolan and things pick right back on up as far as your drive times are concerned, everything does look okay right now. But of course, we'll be keeping a close eye on traffic. And for your drive home, definitely would recommend the shades with that sunshine coming through this evening. All right, we'll see you in a few minutes, Dana. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dana. First at four, a former Meritor nurse pleads guilty to hurting infants in the hospital's newborn intensive care unit. A trial was scheduled for October. The man faced 19 felony counts. Eric Franke has more on today's plea hearing. Eric? Uh, Mark and Susan, today in court, the judge covered all 19 counts detailing the injuries suffered by each of the newborn babies in the NICU that fell victim to 44-year-old nurse Christopher Capum. His actions were first reported back in early of 2018. Hospital officials discovered unexplained bruises on babies. Later, the criminal complaint would reveal far greater injuries, including a skull fracture, broken arms and legs. Capum pleaded guilty to all 19 counts, but initially had trouble recalling specific cases when asked by Judge Jill Karofsky. Uh, it's difficult for me to remember each um, each infant that I care for, each patient that I care for, uh, especially considering the amount of time that has passed um, since these incidents took place. Now, that was not acceptable to the judge, who then met with both attorneys in her chambers. From there, the case proceeded with Capum pleading guilty to all 19 counts. So the incidents in this case happened between March of 2017 and February of 2018. Capum had worked at Meritor as a nurse, though, for 14 years. His bond was revoked after being found guilty. The total sentence, you add all these counts together, is 148 years. No sentencing date yet has been set. Mark, Susan. Eric Franke, thank you. You're welcome. Just into our newsroom in the last hour, Fitchburg police say one person has been arrested after multiple people were shot yesterday. Three people were shot just before noon yesterday in the 2100 block of High Ridge Trail. One of the people shot, 22-year-old Shakita Lee, was arrested and has been tentatively charged with first-degree attempted homicide. Officers say a 21-year-old woman remains in the hospital with life-threatening injuries. After last month's homicide, homicide of a high schooler. Fitchburg Police Chief Chad Brecklin says he is disappointed by the recent violence in the city. 
feel sad that it happens in our community. Uh, ultimately, uh, this is not something we want to see in our community. Uh, it would be great if people uh, resolve their differences in ways that didn't involve firearms. Another 22-year-old was released from the hospital and is expected to be okay. Police say they are not currently looking for more suspects, but the investigation is ongoing. And an update from Madison Police this afternoon. A warrant has been issued for two men charged in a homicide investigation from over the weekend. 33-year-old Lee Arthur Taylor and 37-year-old Lawrence Thomas from Madison have been charged with first-degree intentional homicide. 19-year-old Malik Moss of Sun Prairie was found shot to death in the 500 block of Northport Drive Saturday evening after a report of shots fired. Police say he was shot several times in front of a group of people, including children. We believe that one individual fired most of the shots. We believe that there's a second individual on scene and we can't tell from the video. We know he has a gun. We think he may have fired, but if we're looking at party to a crime of first degree intentional homicide, it's not gonna make any difference in terms of who fired the shots. We believe both of them were there as co-conspirators looking to uh, kill our victim. The investigation is ongoing. For, um, on former Madison Police Chief Mike Koval's first day of retirement, he is sharing more about his reasons for his abrupt departure. Koval made the announcement on his blog yesterday that his resignation would be effective immediately. Our Amanda Quintana is here with the details. Amanda. Koval says he's frustrated and just tired of the politics. He's ready to let someone else step in, hoping a different face and voice will get city government to make public safety a priority. He says despite his efforts, he hasn't been able to get the increase in staffing he says the department needs since 2015 requesting 10 more officers a year but he's ne but never getting it he says he's running out of ways to convince the mayor and alders to pay attention to the needs of the department and frankly we're getting ready to go through another budgetary process where I am completely frustrated in terms of uh, what I believe are important priorities for this department that probably won't be met and I get it but that doesn't mean I have to like it. That doesn't mean I have to agree with it. And it certainly doesn't mean I have to sit through it. He hopes that the person chosen as the next chief will be independent and not let themselves be, quote, lapdogs for politicians. Starting today, the interim police chief is Vic Wall. At 5, we'll hear more about how the permanent chief will be chosen and the advice that Koval has for them. I think this caught a lot of people by surprise. Yeah, it really did, we'll, we'll, including we'll, the mayor, I think. We'll see you at 5. Thank you, Amanda. Well, around the state, an oil refinery company has, in Superior has been given the green light to rebuild after a massive explosion last year. An explosion at the Husky Energy Plant injured 36 people last year and forced much of the city to evacuate. The company says the $400 million project will start immediately and officials hope it will be finished up by 2021. Environmentalists say they are alarmed by the highly toxic chemicals used in the refining process. Despite that, the DNR approved the permit. The House impeachment inquiry into President Trump could become a key issue in the 2020 election. A new CBS News poll shows a majority of Americans at 55 percent support the impeachment inquiry, but the poll shows Americans are divided over whether the president deserves impeachment, with 58 percent responding that it is too early to say. House Democrats are forging ahead with their impeachment inquiry into the president. As the president's team works on a response to the probe, Nicole Killian has the latest from the White House. I, Eugene Scalia, do solemnly swear. President Trump took part in a swearing-in ceremony for his new labor secretary with the impeachment inquiry against him heating up. We're trying to find out about a whistleblower. We have a whistleblower that reports things that were incorrect. In a series of tweets Monday, the president and his allies continued to go after the whistleblower who set off the probe by exposing his phone call with Ukraine's president. I made a call. The call was perfect. Uh, when the whistleblower reported it, he made it sound terrible. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says his chamber would be left with no choice but to hold a trial should House Democrats vote to impeach. I would have no choice uh, but to take it up based on a Senate rule on impeachment. So far, the White House has not set up a war room to deal with the impeachment inquiry, but senior staff met today to discuss a possible response. 
Several congressional committees subpoenaed the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, compelling him to produce documents by October 15th. House Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff told Scott Pelley on 60 Minutes that his committee may also hear from the whistleblower. Your committee already has an agreement with the whistleblower that he will testify. We have an agreement that he or she will testify, yes. So far, much of what was in the whistleblower's complaint has been corroborated by the White House's own notes about the call, but the president is demanding to speak with him or her. The president of Ukraine says his country will not release its version of the call. Nicole Killian, CBS News, the White House. And Congress is technically at the start of a two-week break. Hong Kong is in cleanup mode today after one of the most intense days in 17 weeks of protests. Police arrested more than 150 people in violent clashes Sunday. Angry demonstrators tore down patriotic Chinese signs, railing against what they call a slow erosion of their democratic freedoms. On the eve of China's 70th anniversary of communist rule, President Xi Jinping said, Hong Kong should be allowed to manage its own affairs and has China's full support to, quote, become a better place. Beijing is plan planning a lavish parade in Tiananmen Square to mark 70 years of communism. There's more to come at four. Coming up, we'll meet this month's top-notch teacher. And for this first grade teacher in Prairie du Sac, kindness is the number one subject. Charlotte Deleste will join us when Live at Four continues. You're watching News 3 Now, live at 4.
Well, every year, about 10% of adults in the U.S. fall for a fraud. And new research reveals how a victim connects to a scam can make a big difference whether or not they lose money. New research from the Better Business Bureau finds around one out of four people who fall for employment and fake check frauds lose money. Victims of online purchase scams, which involve buying products that never show up, are the most likely to lose money. Gary Malota from the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority says people are more likely to lose money when they connect with a con through social media or a website. Researchers also found people who live alone and don't have people to talk to are at higher risk. Not talking to someone about a potentially fraudulent offer is problematic and, and leads to higher victimization rates. Matola says knowledge is power. People who didn't fall for a scam already knew about them from news reports or word of mouth. Trade worries abated on Wall Street, and that sent stocks higher. The Dow Industrials up 96 points, closing at 26,916. The Nasdaq up 59. The S&P 500 added almost 15. We're just about a month into the new school year. Yeah, it's the last day of September. It's amazing. October Eve, and Charlotte Deleste is here to introduce us to our top-notch teacher. Hi. Hi, Charlotte. Well, hello. So photojournalist Kathy King and I, we were very lucky to sit in a first grade classroom in Prairie du Sac where we're pretty convinced that these students will have an amazing year because of their teacher, Nicole Volpe. Awesome, Ryder, right to the rug. It's the start of a new school year. Right to the rug, thanks, David. And it's a big one for these kids. And I thought I'd want to teach kindergarten, and then I got hired for first grade. I'm like, this is really fun. Nicole Volpe is beginning her sixth year teaching first grade at Bridges Elementary, and she's rarely ever seen without a smile on her face. That's what people, you're always smiley and peppy. Are you not? I'm exhausted. I'll be honest. I get exhausted, but they, they keep me smiling and entertained. Well, I found a chapter book. You found a chapter book. You can't have a bad day for long without a child going, hey, and telling you a hilarious, doesn't make sense story, and it still makes you smile. What also makes her smile is a good book. I love to read. In fact, reading has become her passion, and with very good reason. I was a kid who struggled in first grade to read. So she now has her reading teacher license because she wanted to do more for her students. And just take a look around this room, and you can easily find budding bookworms. I read four chapters. But there is something else in Mrs. Volpe's curriculum that's become just as, if not more essential as reading. And I know math is important, and reading is important, and science and social that, but to be kind to one another, the world's changing, and we want these kids to be a great part of it. And with Mrs. Volpe helping pave these little first graders paths into the big, big world, there's no doubt they're off to a great start. So even that simple hello I tell the kids, just a hi in the mornings and a handshake will change somebody's day. Nicole, congratulations on being a top-notch teacher. If you know of a teacher who deserves to be recognized, please nominate them at channel3000.com. Click on the education, which is under the news tab, and you will find that nomination form right there. That is such a great age. And to start age. with kindness young like that is Because that's brilliant. something you need, yes. mm -hmm. you need yes. you know, for the rest of your lives. Yeah. And she put you to work, too, I see. Yeah, she, the kids just, I guess they wanted me to read a book, and all of a sudden I had them all here, and was like, oh, we ran out of time. But it was fun. It's fun to be in first grade. Oh, yeah. That yeah. is a great age, you're right, is. Susan. Yeah. Charlotte, mm. so, thank you. Hey, thank thanks you. for filling in for me last week, too. You I are appreciate welcome. It. Anytime. She, thank you for coming a, back. She had to put up with this. <laughs> <laughs> if you saw a Friday show, thank you for coming back. <laughs> Wasn't that bad? No, no. Charlotte, thank you. There's more to come at four, including Will Loper's thoughts on the new animated film, Abominable. And, yeah, I know. It's, Abominable. Hard, it's hard to say that. And coming up tonight at five, leaf pickup is underway in the area. We'll let you know how you can get rid of your leaves as the weather starts to change. That's coming up at five.
Well, take a look at this. It looks like a scene out of an action movie, but it's the real thing. A car's review camera caught this view of a, two oil tankers exploding in South Korea. At least two cars can be seen crossing a nearby bridge at the time of the explosion and narrowly missing the rising flames. There were 25 sailors aboard the two ships, but amazingly, no one was seriously injured. That does look like a movie. Yes, That's crazy. crazy. Unbelievable. Wow. Well, if you're not a fan of rain, at least it's not <laughs> snow yet. Yet. An unusually powerful September storm dumped over three feet of snow in parts of the northern Rockies over the weekend. The last time they got 13 inches of snow in September was back in 1934. The most impressive totals were in Browning, Montana, which has gotten about 40 inches of snowfall. The September storm reached as far as Idaho and Spokane, Washington. Nearly two inches of snow fell there. Uh, that's, of course, the first measurable snow on that day since they started keeping records back in 1881. You know, 84 ain't that bad. I was just going to say, if you're complaining about how humid it is, <laughs> if you have to take either or there, yes, definitely. But uh, that's wild. September to pick yeah. up that much snow. 40 even, inches? Even for them, 40 inches of snowfall. That's, that's a little Well, it's crazy. wild to be this warm, too, in nearly October. It is. It is. And it's all the same system. It's that same area of low pressure. On one side of it, they're getting snow. On the other side, of course, with that warm front, we're seeing temperatures uh, near record-breaking levels throughout the Midwest right now. And so. maybe some heavy rain. And some heavy rain behind it. That's what's going to be coming up for the next Next few days, we'll of course, be keeping a close eye on those areas prone to flooding um, because some isolated flooding concerns might pop up for us. We'll take a closer look at our full forecast right after the break. So if you haven't heard the news yet, it's a little warm outside right now. Also a little humid. We're at 85 currently in Madison with our dew points close to 70. The breeze coming from the south, so that warm air just lifting right on in. 
at about 13 miles per hour. Enough that you'll notice it. The good news, of course, we do have some sunshine. So uh, if you're hoping for a little bit of summer, I know a few people on Facebook were telling me that this was a good day to get some yard work done because we have more rain on the way for Tuesday and Wednesday. And then, of course, temperatures dropping off a little more by the end of the week. So today, uh, yeah, might be a good yard work kind of evening. Our Doppler track is quiet right now. Overall, this evening should stay pretty calm in southern Wisconsin. It's not really until after midnight that our shower and thunderstorm chances develop. That warm front is now to the north. You can see that southerly breeze throughout most of the northern Midwest. Pretty much everyone's sitting in the same boat with temperatures in the mid to upper 80s or even close to 90. So very warm for this time of year. This cold front off to the west is going to continue to drag east, bringing in that chance for showers and thunderstorms for early on Tuesday morning. We're expecting some rounds of rain on Tuesday and then into Wednesday and even Thursday morning. So a lot of rain coming in. We're going to watch those accumulation totals climb pretty quickly. Overnight, our skies will become mostly cloudy by tomorrow morning. The southwest corner might have a little bit of a wet commute, but those showers will continue to develop throughout the day. If you don't have a wet morning commute, probably going to have a wet evening commute as those showers and thunderstorms continue on through. Heavy rainfall likely Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Wednesday will have showers and a mostly cloudy sky, and then another round of rain coming through Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Thursday morning, we'll continue to see the showers, uh, but the good news is things will steadily start to dry up and clear up by Thursday afternoon and evening. There is a marginal risk for severe weather for Tuesday in southern Wisconsin. The concern, of course, with these storms coming through to dealing with isolated flooding and heavier rainfall, stronger wind gusts, all of that possible. Uh, but with this rain coming in, we have an excessive rain concern heading into Tuesday. And of course, for Wednesday and Thursday, that excessive rain concern just stretches through all of southern Wisconsin. So we're going to be very focused on those isolated spots that tend to be more prone to flooding. And then if any of those thunderstorms start to trail each other, we start to see those accumulation totals climb very quickly. I'll uh, we'll be keeping a close eye on that. Temperature wise this afternoon in the 80s throughout the evening will fall through the 70s. And then once we become mostly cloudy overnight, our temps don't move around too much. We'll only drop to about the upper 60s for our overnight lows. Scattered showers and thunderstorms Tuesday morning. Heavier rain likely at times. A good idea to download the weather app just to keep an eye on the radars. Those showers do pass over the area because again, some spots may be dry at times, but then the rain just comes right back on through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. As far as accumulation totals, they really tend to creep on up uh, looking into Thursday morning. Right now we're guaranteeing really at least two inches for most of the area, but some areas could pick up quite a bit more than that. And if those storms start trailing each other, uh, we could be dealing with some very high accumulation totals. A flash flood watch has already been issued for all of southern Wisconsin. It goes into effect tomorrow morning, lasts all the way into Wednesday morning because of that excessive rainfall concern and the possibility, of course, for flash flooding. So we do have alert days in the forecast also for Tuesday and Wednesday. With the threat for showers and thunderstorms, we could see some of those heavier showers bringing anywhere from one to two inches of rainfall each day as these storms pass on through. Overnight temperatures only dropping to the upper 60s, breezy outside and those storms developing late. Right now we are partly cloudy, but we're steadily going to become mostly cloudy by tomorrow morning. Tomorrow temperatures won't be nearly as warm, but it will still be very humid outside. Plan on highs in the mid 70s. Those showers and thunderstorms staying with us for most of the day, along with the rain. Again, those wind gusts could be a little bit of a concern. That breeze coming from the southwest anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour. Temperatures are in the mid 70s on Tuesday. We're not planning on hopping back up to the 80s any time again. So that's uh, taking the summer away, but instead we're getting a very wet rainy weather and with fall like temperatures. Low 60s on Wednesday with that alert day in the forecast because of the showers. Rain possible early Thursday and then our skies will gradually clear through the afternoon, giving us a partly sunny sky. Friday, we finally get a mostly sunny sky in the mid 70s. A good day to dry out, shake the rain out a little bit before our next chance for showers creeps back in on Saturday. Heading into next week, looking at a little cooler weather and mostly sunny skies. So that'll be some good news uh, for the start of the following work week. That's a quick look at your forecast. All right, Tina, thank you. It is time for Potentially Yours here on Live at 4. Marissa DeGroote <laughs> is here from the Dane County Humane Society Hi, to help Carter find a forever home. Hi, Marissa. Hi. Look oh, he couldn't face. be cuter. Oh, my gosh. He is one of my favorites here. I mean, does that smile get any better? <laughs> So what's his story? <laughs> so Carter here was actually found stray running around in Fitchburg. Uh, oh, we weren't aw. able to find an owner, so now he's looking for a great new home. 
It's funny that people wouldn't call or something. He's not chipped or anything, obviously. No, we weren't able to reunite him, but I, I think Carter's going to fit in well with a lot <laughs> of different that, households. Look at that underbite. And now you can see the smile, right? <laughs> and he's a bit of an interesting guy. Um, you can see he's got that mighty underbite. He's also rather short and kind of has that nice long body, so um, your guess is as good as ours of what he exactly is. <laughs> a little of this, a little of that. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Seems to get along well with everyone. Oh, yeah, very oh friendly. Gosh. He loves meeting new people, and I think as long as you're doing a nice slow intro to any other pets in the house, I think he's going to do well. Look at that smile. I know. How could you say no to that face? <laughs> what, what, maybe four or five years old? Yeah, you know, he's not one of those young adults, definitely not a senior. What we do know about his age is that he's still quite active. Um, I see him going and zooming through the yard, uh, and he loves getting out and playing. When he's not panting, I think it's even cuter oh. with, yeah. the, with the underbite. <laughs> All right, you got uh, Camp Harper coming up. We do. We've got some day camps coming up throughout the next few months um, as school has some days off. Uh, so if your kids want to come and hang out at the shelter, get to meet some great animals and hang out with kids and do some great activities and service projects for the shelter, those are open now. Oh, that's that, great. It often fills up too, doesn't it? Oh, it fills up pretty fast. All right, last week. Last week we had Rock and Roll, another cute pup, and we are so excited he did get adopted. Oh, yeah. oh that's great mm -hmm. news. He, was a, he liked his treats. Yes. Yes, he did. <laughs> All right, let's get Carter. <laughs> yes. Oh. You, need a lap? you need a bigger lap. I yeah. know. I'm, I don't think I have a big enough lap that, for all this dog. Yeah, he's long. Oh, I he's love those so, teeth. What a oh, good boy. Goodness. I know, he's so cute. Right, let's, let's find him a great home. Mm -hmm. Marissa, thank you. Go, thank to the, you. Marissa. go to the website giveshelter.org or call 830-413 for information on Carter and all the other critters available. Thanks again. We come back right ahead to the movies with our Will Loper. We'll see what Will thinks of the new animated film, Abominable. That's when Live at Four continues right after this. Hardy's
Dad always wanted me to travel the world. Someday. Huh? <gasps> There's a Yeti on my roof. Is that your home? That was a clip from Abominable, one of the newest movies to hit theaters. Is the film worth seeing? Well, here to let us know what he thinks is our film critic, Will Loper. Hi, Will. Looks Hi. cute. Oh, it's so cute, yes. And this is the third movie featuring Yetis in a year, <laughs> if you can believe it, but it's the charm. This is a beautifully animated movie with an emotional journey that may have you reaching for that Kleenex box. So Yi's a girl in Shanghai who finds a Yeti on her roof, and after seeing that, he's really quite soft and cuddly, decides to return him to his family on Mount Everest before an evil corporation finds him. Now, the rest of the movie is a chase film with Yi and two of her friends helping the Yeti, who they name Everest, get away. Along the way, Yi comes to terms with her grief from her father who passed away. The best part of the movie involves music. Everest is able to hum and use music as a sort of magic to make things grow, and Yi uses her violin, that was her dad's, to communicate with Everest and create some magic of her own. There's plenty of action and funny parts to keep the little ones entertained, and adults will find a lot to appreciate as well. Toy Story 4, look out! This may oh. take the crown as best animated film of the year. Really? So yeah. this is a new one. I, I asked you if this was a remake. Mm -hmm. This is an original one. Maybe it's just because there's been so many <laughs> Yetis. I don't know why Yetis are the in thing right now. They're yeah. so cute. We had Smallfoot last year, which was kind of the reverse. A uh, human found a bunch of uh, Yetis, and they returned him to his family, and this is kind of a Yeti going back to his family. So. But this is an original one. And this is original, and uh, it took the crown at the box office and it's the only the third original film this year to do it wow. which really says a lot about how many sequels remakes adaptations there are right. it's refreshing to see an original and did you have to grab the kleenex box did it move you that uh, way i was tearing <laughs> up i really was not expecting it but it got me yes oh that's good that's it's... good okay what rating did you give it uh, four violins out of five the music is really spectacular in this film oh that's a very high rating it's, that's great looking yeah. forward to it okay what's coming up next week oh next week we're changing gear Years. It's uh, Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, that seems like perfect casting, doesn't it? It does, it does. Uh, Do you know it, anything about this movie? It's, uh, well, there's a lot of buzz, both good and kind of controversial, surrounding it, so All right. we'll see. All right, we'll look forward to that next week then. All right, thanks, Will. Thank you. Thanks so much. We'll be right back after this. At Harker.
No accidents to report right now. Things look pretty okay on the roads, just a little busier along the belt line, especially on the eastbound side. Things starting to slow down uh, all the way back. Actually, this is at Park Street. You can see the leftbound side starting to get just a little more congested. Uh, thankfully, again, no accidents. A few disabled cars blocking the shoulders, but uh, no major delays blocking any lanes right now. Along the eastbound side, speeds look just fine closer to Gammon, but once you get near Fish Hatchery Road, down to about 20 to 30 miles per hour along the westbound side, also seeing those delays getting on and off at Park Street. And then once you just get past Fish Hatchery Road along the SMS, we don't have any major delays right now, but from Janesville to the Beltline, it'll take you just about 26 minutes from Sox City to Middleton. It'll be about a 17 minute drive this evening. And then to get from Sun Prairie to downtown, just a little longer than usual, about an 18 minute drive for you on this sunny, warm evening. That's a quick look at traffic. All right, Dana, thank you. Alyssa Weatherby is on a roll. She may have just become the first person to log roll across the Mississippi River. She rolled the river from Port Byron, Illinois to LeClaire, Iowa. A timber sports athlete from Maine, she used a special synthetic log and pulled it off with the aid of her family who helped keep her bearings. She finished in about 30 minutes and is reportedly the only person on record to attempt this feat. Boy, and look at the current in the river yeah. too. That looks pretty, pretty challenging. And speaking of currents, we are currently in an access economy, also sometimes known as a sharing economy. In the sharing economy, people rent or share things like cars, homes, and even clothes. UW-Madison professor, we like to call her our happiness expert, Christine <laughs> Whelan is back with us. Hi, Hi Christine. Good, good to, see to see you. Good to see you, too. This does seem like a popular trend. You think of things like... Um, um, What's the drive? Uber. Uber, Uber and, and Lyft mm -hmm. and uh, uh, VRBO yeah. and Airbnb and, and even clothes too. And even clothes too. So in the last 10 years, we've really seen this rise of this, this sharing economy where instead of actually buying everything ourselves, we will rent it or, or share it in terms of just having access to it when we want it. So, you know, we'll call an Uber or a Lyft instead of potentially having a, a car uh, and we can do vacation rentals instead of owning a second home. Uh, but the one that I'm most interested in is this idea of sharing clothes. Uh, and recently, there have been a whole variety of new companies that have come out uh, to send box subscriptions of clothes that you don't actually have to buy. So, of course, there are the box services and the subscription services where you buy what you are given and if you like it. But these are ones where even if you like it, you get to wear it once and send it back. <laughs> and you've actually tried this. You, so, you've done it. For the last three years, I have been a devotee of Rent the Runway Unlimited. And the way Rent the Runway Unlimited works is that you have a subscription and you can have about four items at a time, or you can upgrade to have more spots. And, uh, and I have a constant rotation of fabulous clothes, like this jacket, for example, is a $500 designer jacket. It's an Annette Lepore jacket, and I'm gonna send it back tomorrow. I'm wearing it once, I'm enjoying it, and, uh, and then I don't have to own it to actually get the fun out of it. Is there an economic downside to this? So, you know, I wondered whether retailers would worry about this, like whether, because I, I, in fact, went shopping over the weekend, and what I did was I sort of looked just to see what I might be able to rent later on. But honestly, this is exposing a a, a huge number of people to different brands and actually encouraging more brand awareness. So my bet is that retailers aren't suffering too much from this. The other thing that's really great about it is that, uh, that, is that there are various different retailers who are getting in the act um, themselves. So Ann Taylor, uh, New York and Company, various brands are now doing this rental as a way to lure people in to get to know their brands. They're and there's working. there's an is. environmental impact as well. There is. It's wonderful. So rather than uh, rather than have all of us individually dry clean our items. I, I just send this item back and rent the runway dry cleans in bulk, which means it uses fewer chemicals uh, and all of their materials are reusable and recyclable. So I actually think that I get to be both fashionable and thrifty at the same time. Right, so thrifty is spending in keeping with your values. And if one of your values is not accumulating things and having more stuff and being very materialistic, but actually enjoying things and then spending more of your money on relationships and, and experiences, this is a good way to do it. And what are we talking in terms of expense? So they range in, uh, they totally range in price, but it's usually from about $60 to about $160 is, is where the market is looking. So at the high end of Rent the Runway Unlimited, I got a $67,000 wardrobe last year 
year for $159 a month. Well, so you added it up. <laughs> they added up for you oh, as okay. a kind of marketing slogan to tell you, you know, wow, you're really so getting it's like benefit. Sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars you're spending. That's right, for a sixteen, seven thousand dollar wardrobe. And since I lecture and I come on and talk to you, Susan, this is so perfect for you. I, I'm really intrigued by it. I'd really like to try it. And what about for men? So, in fact, for a long time, men were kind of left out of this fun. But recently, I discovered the Mister Collection, where you too can get a box of shirts and slacks. I don't know that they do suit jackets, uh, but they they do all this sort of casual and casual to business wear clothes, and they send it to you in a box. They have a professional stylist who asks you all questions about how your lifestyle and what you're looking to do with it. And that's uh, that's only around $69 a month. And that's a rental as well. And that's a rental as well. Now, you can buy it at a discount, as with all these services. You can buy the item at a big discount if, uh, if you enjoy them. But really, the fun is that constantly rotating dream closet. It's a fabulous thing. And the idea that you're having a good impact on the environment. You're not just accumulating things. And honestly, that you get to spend your money on other things rather than super expensive clothes. Is it a lot of work, though? It sounds like yeah. a lot of work. <laughs> okay, so it is. So this is the downside. This is what I tell people. I really like shopping, and so this is kind of like being able to online shop all the time. <laughs> um, and you can actually send it when you go on vacation, so you can pack less. You can have your clothes sent to you at your wow. other location. But yeah. You're right. It's a it's time a little commitment. bit of logistics. Yeah. It's for those who are excited about fashion, uh, but also need it usually for work. Yeah, it'd be fun right. to try. Interesting, Definitely. Interesting, interesting trend. No yeah. contract you can get out of no it. No contract okay. you can get out of it. I try think it. it's a way to yeah. consume happiness. And next month, I'd love to hear if it uh, if any of these work for you. I will try. Mr. What? Collection. The Mr. Collection. Okay, I'll check it out. <laughs> oh, all right, good. Christine, thanks for being with us. <laughs> Great to see you, Christine. Good Thank you. Good to see you. We'll have a final check of your forecast coming up. Plenty of playback. <laughs>it's a little warm out. It's summer outside right now, guys. Uh, mostly sunny for a lot of the area. A few clouds, but a uh, little toasty. Temperatures are in the mid to upper 80s. Here's a live look at downtown with our Edgewater Sky Cam. No showers for this evening, but as we get closer to Tuesday morning, of course, the shower chances are going to creep right back in. It's been quite a jump in the last 24 hours. About a 25 degree jump in Madison. That puts us at 85 right now. It is 90 in La Crosse and 86 in Platteville. Our heat index readings are just
just a little higher than those temperatures. So know that over the next few hours, we will stay in the 80s, but it's going to feel like we're in the mid to upper 80s for uh, a few more hours. Overnight, of course, we fall through the 70s. And then we have the low 60s for our overnight lows. We're keeping track, though, of course, of the shower chances that will be developing overnight because the rain's coming through and it could get pretty heavy at times. Uh, there's already a flash flood watch that has been issued for Tuesday heading into Wednesday morning. Again, it doesn't go into effect until 7 o'clock, but all of southern Wisconsin included in that flash flood watch. We have alert days in the forecast for Tuesday and Wednesday because of the shower and thunderstorm threat that will be coming on through. Not much of a severe weather threat, more just heavy rainfall and isolated flooding. So if you do have anything planned for Tuesday or Wednesday evening, you need to keep that in mind. Uh, the rain, once it picks up for some areas, we're really not going to see any relief until we get into Thursday and all this rain is out of here. And so the ground is saturated. The ground is already saturated. Uh, a lot of our lakes and rivers are pretty full right now. The watershed's full, so, so we'll be keeping a close eye on those lower-lying areas uh, later on Tuesday and into Wednesday. And, and, and the dangers, the training of those storms over Absolutely. one after another. When they start following each other, those yeah. totals just start climbing so quickly. So savor this day. Bottle yes. it. Savor Keep it. This Enjoy it. Yeah. All right, Dana. Thank you. Thanks, Dana. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow here on Live at 4, we'll have a preview of the Local Biz Awards handed out by Dane by Local. And will your next car be electric? Consumer Reports will tell us if an electric car is right for you. That's tomorrow on Live at 4. In today's Final Touch, we have some spectacular video from China. Cities across the country there have lit up their famous landmarks and buildings in recent days. They're celebrating the upcoming 70th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. That'll be marked on October 1st. In the capital city of Beijing, many landmarks, including the National Stadium and the Great Wall, were lit up with slogans and images that show the people's love and wishes for the motherland. In every city...